Halle Berry has got a new horror film out directed by Alexandra Adger and she also produced the film. I saw the trailers for this, uh, it had me kind of intrigued but I was kind of on the fence about it as well. It didn't seem to give too much away in the trailers as to just what exactly was going on uh, but suffice to say I got the gist that it was a family stuck out in the woods with an evil presence kind of surrounding them. On top of that, this is one of the films we have got in this year's 31 on 31 this October. So I went to see it. It's a mixed bag at the start, I'll say that much, but it does get good, really good uh, from a particular moment on. So First, the negatives. The big negative for me really is that there are certain things in this film that still go unexplained. You know, if, if the trailer kind of had you scratching your head as to what the plot was, you get the plot, you understand the plot, you get what's going on, but there are certain pieces of information that are never quite given to us. Therefore, we're still left wondering what's the truth, what's, what's really real, what's not real. So it kind of revolves around, as I say, this, this, this mother with her two kids, they're out in the forest, and it has this, basically it's It Follows meets A Quiet Place meets The Village. Okay, if you think those three films all moulded into one, that's what you get here. They, they kind of have their own little community, just the three of them. Uh, they can't venture too far beyond the house unless they're tied to it with these ropes. And for some reason, these ropes are the one thing that keep them from being got by the evil presence that is stalking them. Uh, that has apparently taken over the rest of the world. Only the mum can see it, a la It Follows. And like in the village, they do have to stay out from the rest of the world, kind of cornered off in this house. And that's the only place that keeps them safe. Now, like I say, it's never really explained why that house is the thing that keeps them safe. We're given a story about how her father built the house as a protective thing. So, yeah, presumably there's a blessing over it, something or other. But we don't go into it enough to sate my need to, to have that information, quite frankly. I'd, 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 I'd like to have those blanks filled in a bit more. Personally, that's just me. But out of that, we do get this story that is really all about how the family home is, is really the protective space from evil. You know, if, if you want to think about bringing up your kids, keeping the family together, the home is the symbol of... Of, of where you do that, you know? I mean, now, a, a lot of people who come from broken homes would, would probably say, yeah, not so much personally for me, not getting that. And given the fact that Halle Berry's character in this does come across for much of the film as a bit of a loony, that also does feed into the fact that, you know, it, it kind of negates what the film might be saying in terms of, yes, the, the family home is the place where, you know, you feel safe, you feel loved and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag in messages because of the tone. I will also say that the first half hour of the film, I was kind of, I, I wasn't checking out, but I felt like not, I didn't feel too invested because I felt like it was, again, like I say, a lot of different elements from other films all kind of cobbled together where I was like, yeah, I can, I can kind of see what's going on here. You know, it's, it's like, but, but, it, but it held my interest enough due to certain visuals and certain creepy elements that, that you know, that prickled the, the hairs up on the back of my neck enough to make me kind of stay engaged. Not thrilled, but engaged. But about the halfway mark, or maybe just before the halfway mark of the film, there's something that happens that I didn't expect. Um, and when that thing happens... The film gets really tense for me personally. Uh, there's, there's, like I say, there's a certain element, there's, there's, there's a big event that happens where all of a sudden the dynamics of this family change and the, the film takes a bit of a twist. 
uh, in, in kind of in a, in a not necessarily a different direction, but in, in a direction that makes it just more tense, uh, where all of a sudden you're like, oh, okay, now I'm really scared for these people. And that's when I got hooked in. That's when the film really started to grab, grab me. So if you can get, get through that first half hour without too much upset, I, I think once you hit the halfway mark, you'll start to become invested. At least I was, personally, like I say. It's all a matter of subjectivity. The performances from the three main leads are all really great, but particularly these two kids. I've not seen them in anything before, at least I don't think I have, I don't remember them from anything, uh, but the, the, the two that play the brothers, the, these young kids, are fantastic. They've got a lot riding on their shoulders. This, this is, it's not a light film. It's not a breezy film, you know what I mean? In fact, there's, there's I would say no respite in this film and and again that's that's part of the problem i had with the the first half hour the first act is i found myself kind of thinking about how i would react to living in this world we find th these characters in and to be quite honest i sat there most of the time thinking i'd rather be dead uh, you, you know, it's, it's, if I was in their circumstances, if, if, if life was literally just about getting up each day, trying to, to desperately scrape for whatever scraps you could and not being able to move too far away from this, this house in the middle of nowhere, I, I think I'd just say, actually, you know what? This isn't living. This is survival and I, there's got to be more than this. And I think I'd rather be dead. It's a bleak film that, and, and there is very little, if anything, to kind of shine a ray of light, a ray of hope in it. If that's your bag, then you, then you might love this. I think it will put a lot of people off. But as I say, just from a performance standpoint, from a technical aspect standpoint, you know, the cinematography, the way that Adja directs the film, uh, I think all of that is on point. I think it's really effective. I think some of the the, the demonic things that are going on or these, whatever this, this, this entity is, the way it manifests itself, again, like I say, raises the hairs on the back of my neck. It's really creepy, uh, which, you know, Given it's a horror film, that's what it's designed to do. So in that regard, it's very effective. In terms of rewatch value, however, I, I probably won't be returning to this anytime soon. I think once it hits its stride, like I say, in the halfway mark, and then I'm really tense, I'm really on the edge of my seat, I'm wondering where it's going, I'm wondering who's real, who's not. All of that stuff is like a roller coaster ride right up to the finish uh, and and so the back end, the back half, I found actually to be quite thrilling uh, and it kind of got me over that hump of being in this world where previously I was kind of wishing you just put me out of my misery. In spite of all the darkness and depression and bleakness that is in the film, it is kind of in the end a, a movie about love, about familial love, a family love, about how that is what, you know, can conquer evil. Again, going back to the, the notion that that's what a home should be, that's what a family home should be. A quick look on Letterboxd just before I came on to do this review. I saw that it had a 2.7 out of 5 and I, I, I feel like that's somewhat unfair. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't personally trust that score. I think it's definitely deserving of, of a bit more love than that. Um, but like I say, it does have issues. It does have narrative problems. Uh, I just think that once stuff starts kicking off, you start to forget about or, or not care as much about those narrative problems because you're so invested in just just seeing these people stay alive. But maybe I'm just being too forgiving. What about you? Have you seen Never Let Go? Will you be watching it? Uh, you know, anyone familiar with the Autop stream and our 31 on 31 that we'll be doing this October, maybe you'll be watching it for that. Who knows? But yeah, any interest? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you for watching this review and until next time, cracking.